Welcome to Conversations from St. Albert College, a program that invites you into discussions taking place in your community on today's local and global issues. Now, your host for Conversations from St. Albert College, the Dean and Academic Vice President of the College, Michael Marsden. Good evening, my name is Michael Marsden, and I'm your host for this edition of Conversations from St. Norbert College. Our special guest this evening is Dr. Howard Ebert, Associate Professor of Religious Studies, as well as the Director of both a Master's Program in Liberal Studies and a Master's Program in Theological Studies. Howard received his undergraduate degree from St. Norbert College and his doctorate in Religious Studies from Marquette University. He joined the St. Norbert College faculty 20 years ago. And since that time, he has been active in many aspects of the college community, including serving for eight years as Associate Dean for Humanities and Fine Arts. Our topic this evening is the newly established Master's Degree Program in Liberal Studies, which Howard directs. Howard, welcome to our program. We're really well, pleased to have good. you with us. Good to be here, Mike. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about this program, but before I do that, maybe a, a, a sort of a beginning question might be, um, what, what role do Master's Programs play here at St. Albert College, which is primarily an undergraduate institution. Mm -hmm. We have three graduate programs now, with the newest Correct. one being added. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see those, the relationship between undergraduate and graduate? And why would we offer graduate programs? Well, I think, uh, first of all, it's a good question. And I think um, our graduate programs build on the strengths that we have as an undergrad institution. In many ways, they're an extension of our undergrad uh, mission, and also, I think they enhance our undergrad education. Uh, they enhance them because it gets people out, uh, our instructors out to uh, meet people, leading people in the field in education or theology now in, in liberal studies. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all enriched by that presence. And so uh, the graduate programs really find their foundation in the strengths of this institution and extend those strengths to the wider uh, community. Now you've directed the uh, master's in theological studies for yeah. quite quite a number of years. Yes. When yes. did you start with that? Uh, 1998. 1998. And that program was, as I recall, um, created at the request of the Diocese of Green Bay. Correct. Um, to mm -hmm. serve um, the lay ministry in the area. Mm -hmm. Has it prim that been primarily its function? It has been. Um, in, in the mid 1980s, uh, the diocese approached Silver Lake College and St. Norbert College uh, to address the need to educate the lay leaders in parishes and also in schools. And so Silver Lake took the, uh, developed the commission ministry program, which is for the undergrad uh, population, and St. Norbert College did the graduate uh, section okay. uh, of um, the instruction. It's been very good. Uh, primarily, uh, most of the people in the program are from the diocese, but we have a growing number of other um, participants from mainline Christian denominations. Oh, and we right. also have a satellite site in Albuquerque, in Albuquerque New Mexico. Albuquerque, yes. yes. In fact, uh, we're going to have a graduation ceremony out there later this year. Correct, yes, so, in uh, August. Yeah, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, let's talk, talk about the Masters of Liberal Studies because it's been, what, five years in the making? Yes, it, has, someone there. it is. I remember our initial conversation. It was about five years ago, yes. How, what, what's the basic concept for a Masters of Liberal Studies? What's, what's the basic idea behind it? Well, I, I think first thing that a person has to note is that many times graduate programs mean greater specialization and a narrowing of focus. Um, a master's in liberal studies does not do that. It actually broadens one's horizons. It's highly interdisciplinary. It involves uh, the three divisions of our academic uh, program here at St. Norbert College, humanities and fine arts, the natural sciences, and also the social sciences. So it's interdisciplinary. It's a broadening and and in that way, it's, it's distinctive from other graduate programs that so often mean more and more narrow specialization. specialization. Right. Yes. So who would be the ideal candidate for uh, this program in your, in your mind? Uh, anyone who is intellectually curious, interested in coming to understand the world better, wanting to communicate better, wanting to um, be with other people who are asking the kind of big questions about life, about uh, how we should proceed. Uh, and um, I think people who really enjoy ideas and enjoy reading and enjoy discussions, um, I think though that's the, the kind of person that we're looking for. Yeah. Most, degree, most master's degree programs are directly connected to career development mm -hmm. or professional development. How do you see this program fitting into career advancement? I, I think it fits in. Uh, it fits in because it really helps someone, one, 
develop their own analytical skills, their writing skills, uh, their ability to communicate. Those, those mm -hmm. skills can be transported across any uh, career or across any profession. And in that way it helps, though the primary focus isn't necessarily promotion in one's profession, it is to help the person understand the world, understand their place in the world, and be able to meet challenges in a creative, innovative way. Uh, mm -hmm. Ways that, not narrow specialization, but again, to think of things uh, in, from multiple perspectives, mm -hmm. multiple mm -hmm. viewpoints. In fact, you know, when I address the incoming students um, each, each summer during orientation, I make the point that the liberal studies program, the undergraduate liberal studies program, general education program, is one that really will serve them quite well mm -hmm. because as they go through a working career, you know, they probably will change not just jobs but actually careers six or seven times. Exactly. And their first, their major will make it in their first or their second job, but probably not the third, fourth, mm -hmm. and fifth, particularly if they're shifting careers. Mm -hmm. So the general education courses that help them think, communicate clearly, um, analyze complex mm -hmm. problems are going to serve them well in the long run. So mm -hmm. very interesting. And now, does this then extend one of the core, the core? what I would call core values and core businesses of St. Norbert College mm -hmm. to the graduate level? Is that one way of putting it? I think it's a natural extension of what Abbott Pennings did over 100 years ago when he started the school in a kitchen mm -hmm. uh, of the rectory, and that is trying to address the educational needs of the community. At that time, it meant a business school or commerce school. Um, today, we have more and more people who have an undergrad education, uh, but recognize that, that undergrad education may not have been all that they wanted or were able to uh, uh, achieve. And this is an opportunity to reach that, uh, that group of people who are looking for more education, greater education. So self-fulfillment as well as professional development. Mm -hmm. in that point. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, are there other programs like this around the country? I mean, how popular are these programs? They're, they're extremely popular. What's interesting, they're not, they haven't been very popular in the state of Wisconsin. I think there's only one other program uh, in the state. But when you look uh, nationwide, there's over 120 programs, University graduate of Chicago, programs. graduate programs. Um, uh, you know, DePaul University, Chicago. Chicago, and University of Chicago, so forth. And they're growing in popularity. And I think the growth Why do you think that is? I, I think the real reason is that we recognize that the world is changing. The, the world is complex. We need to come to the kinds of problems, the kinds of challenges, not from a narrow perspective, but from an interdisciplinary, from a multiple perspective. And I think the Masters in Liberal Studies does that. It right. really uh, stresses that you're not going to solve any question, any issue, by one approach alone. You need multiple approaches, multiple methods. And by doing that, we are more innovative, more creative in trying to resolve the issue. Or, interesting. Uh, well, who will be teaching these courses? Who are the well, this Who is one are of the planned instructors, at least. Well, um, this is one of the exciting things about the program. I think St. Norbert has been known for a very strong general education program, and we have exceptional teachers here, uh, people who are active scholars, who are excellent in the classroom, who are committed to education, and, and uh, they're going to be the ones who are staffing uh, the, the program. Um, so primarily full-time faculty members. Primarily full-time faculty. In some instances, we may be able to get Professor Emeriti or maybe uh, some Norbertines, or in a rare instance, uh, just recently we had a, a distinguished professor uh, from another institution teach for us for a year, and you know, if we could get someone of that caliber to teach sure. in this program, it'd be a, it'd be a real, uh, real boost. Oh, awesome. yeah. So how long will it take a student to complete the program? Uh, typically, it will take two to three years. Um, probably three years would be the more leisurely uh, approach. Uh, more intense could be two, one and a half to two and a half years. So essentially it's 32 credit hours if I remember from the description? Correct. And they're all three credit hour classes? They're all cre three credit hours except for the, um, the colloquium, the capstone course, and then the thesis project uh, when the person's writing the thesis project. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now um, so far what kind of interest have you had in the program? Very strong. Um, We've done limited advertising, and uh, I've been very impressed by the number of inquiries we had. We had an open house uh, a few weeks ago, and we had a good attendance and a very, well, you were there, a yeah, uh, very uh, robust and vibrant discussion. It was, and, it was uh, interesting, yeah, I agree. Um, with instructors and with prospective students. 
Uh, since then, I've gotten uh, you know additional inquiries, and uh, people are very very interested. Of, I just talked to a gentleman yesterday from Madison, an alum of Saint Norbert, who's quite interested in in the program. So I, I've been. Um, really enthused by by the response well, that's, that is good that is good now what how, how do you respond to somebody who says but why why should i do the masters of liberal studies why don't i go get an mba um, um, or maybe uh, an advanced degree in sociology or mm -hmm. how, how do you respond I mean, or perhaps they should but mm -hmm. but how, how how would you see the value of this program for someone who's just looking for a graduate program who traditionally might have gone into an mba program mm -hmm. I th well, number one is I, I think depending on what the long-term personal and professional goals are for the person, some right. of those programs may, may be the, the viable route and the most appropriate route. But again, the Master's in Liberal Studies, I think, is reflective of the world, the changing world that we live in, a world that we don't know what issues, what problems. You know, so often people say that time they graduate from college, a lot of the information they've received is dated. The, the Master's in Liberal Studies is, I think, reflective of this new world, a world that is much more interdisciplinary, a world that is collaborative, mm. a world that uh, uh, is energized by people who have common goals together to talk through issues, talk through um, uh, questions. And when you put those, those individuals with a good instructor, with traditions, uh, a wealthy wealth of tradition, uh, that has gone before us, I, I just think really positive things. I want, I want to ask you about the interdisciplinarity of the program, but before I do that, I want to remind our viewers that you're watching Conversations from St. Norbert College, and our very special guest this evening is Dr. Howard Ebert, and our topic is St. Norbert College's newly established master's degree program in liberal studies. We talk a lot about interdisciplinarity, but you know, let, let's just step back for a minute and mm -hmm. try to give it a definition. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do we really mean by it? I mean, if I was skeptical about the program, and I would say students taking courses all over the map in all those three divisions you mm -hmm. mentioned, humanities and fine arts, social sciences, natural sciences, you know, I could make the argument that there's no depth there. There's no, there, there's no grasp of, of long, longitudinal information. Uh -huh. how, how would you respond to that? Well, I would actually argue that it is sustained by not narrowing uh, the definition of the problem or the question. For instance, freedom. Okay. Are we free? How? What are we called to do with free, our, our freedom? Those kinds of questions, I think, cut across and are enriched by conversations between psychology, sociology, philosophers, literary okay. individuals, uh, theology, because uh, too often we end up limiting the question or limiting the resources we have to address the question and not really recognizing the complexity of the question, be that freedom or democracy or what does it mean to tell the truth. I think when we ask those big questions and how we respond from multiple perspectives, we come to recognize complexity, but we also recognize that there is a commonality in this quest for knowledge, in this quest to respond. And whatever that, the discipline. Whatever the discipline. Okay. Now push the, push the idea of interdisciplinarity then. So you, you say the approach is an interdisciplinary approach, but mm -hmm. let's, let's take an example and push it out and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Let's take a question about um, freedom. Mm -hmm. okay. um, are we truly free right. uh, in any way? Mm -hmm. or are we always in some way limited? Right. Let's, let's assume that's the question. How would you go about solving that through this approach? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, uh, we would want to have a discussion and a description of what do we mean by freedom. How do we understand, does freedom mean I get to do whatever I want? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, does freedom mean that there's no kind of indicator of what I'm going to choose to do? What do we mean by freedom? And again, there's a wealth of philosophy and, and theology. theology that addresses that question of freedom. Um, along with that, I think we have come to a greater recognition that Yes, we're free, but we're also determined by social conditions. And are we all equally free? Are you and I equally free because of our backgrounds, because of our, of, of how um, we grew up, where we grew up? What about uh, race? What about um, economic conditions regarding conditioning freedom? And I think there's an assumption of, often that well, we're all equally free. I don't think that holds up. Uh, and so when you bring in the social sciences, when you bring in economics mm -hmm. 
and are we economic, you know, rational actors in terms of how we make decisions and what we buy and not buy? Are, are we cold calculating actors or are we influenced by factors like commercials and that kind of, I mean, so I think as you start so broadening... choices are limited, yes. yes right, yeah. Ultimately. Now let's talk about the product. Let's suppose three years from now we have mm -hmm. a whole cohort that have graduated from the program. What are they like? <laughs> Where's the value added? Well, the value added is the value of an, a sustained, ongoing conversation okay. with other people who are interested and are, are energized by this. By the way, one of the things I've noticed in the Masters of Theological Studies is how much energy comes from like-minded people together dealing with these issues. I was there's an ask energy. You about that. Yes. Yeah, there's an energy. There's uh, an inspiration. I mean, ma often I leave those classes more inspired to go home and read more, to think more, or to examine how I dealt with issues at home or at work uh, because of their because of the discussion. So something happens that couldn't happen anyplace else mm -hmm. because of the dynamic of the of the classroom, the faculty member, the adult students, right. you know, and mm -hmm. working through issues. Yes, so. and I think that carries over to one's personal life, to one's professional life. Um, you know, I've said this before, and I think it really applies to the Master's in Liberal Studies, is that because of my undergrad education, I know I parent differently. I know mm -hmm. I'm different as a spouse. I know I'm different professionally because of the knowledge that I've gained. Hopefully better. Well, I hope, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> different. <laughs> but I, I think the same will be with uh, the Master's in Liberal Studies. There, there'll be a recognition of complexity that isn't overwhelming, that doesn't mm -hmm. paralyze one, but a way, a method, a way of sorting through that complexity, finding some common ground, and also where there's differences. Do you see this almost as a return to an earlier age where, uh, for example, it's a very interesting thing mm -hmm. for me that um, all PhDs are called doctors of philosophy, you know, mm -hmm. um, even d regardless of the subject matter. Um, so if we could, were to turn the clock back where, th where knowledge was more integrated, um, is this really an attempt to go back to a more classical integrated model? I think it is, and I think the difference is we, we had a span of time, uh, you know, especially in the modern period and with the Enlightenment, that we thought maybe we could know it all, the Renaissance person, mm -hmm. um, and now we recognize no one person can know, know it all. And in fact, even in our own area of expertise, we can't uh, know it all. And so one can throw up one's hands and say, well, I guess it's, it doesn't matter, or you could f try to find some kind of integrated base or integrative approach to dealing with these mm -hmm. questions. And I think that's, that is part of what's going on in terms of the Masters of Liberal Studies. I really did, uh, I've said this earlier, but it's a product of our time trying to respond to the needs of our time. And that the more narrower approaches to things haven't worked. Right. Which we see it time and time again. Exactly. Um, we take an issue like health care, how complex it is, how difficult it is to deal with it, how um, past efforts to deal with universal health care in this mm -hmm. country have failed. Yes. Um, for many reasons, probably not the least of which is the inability to see the issue holistically, to be able to understand how complex and how many pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. there really are. So yep. I would agree with you. Now, if I was taking courses in this program, how would I go about them? Are they during the day? Are they in the evenings? No, we've tried to, to make the uh, schedule very flexible and also uh, sensitive to especially people who have jobs and, and family commitments. So the courses will be offered in the evening or on weekends, okay. uh, typically. All right. So like one night a week? One night a week, uh, usually for 10 weeks in the, in mm -hmm. the fall. Uh, there's flexibility also in terms of transferring some credits into the program. Um, there's some, um, some overlap between courses that are offered in the Master's of Theological Studies and mm -hmm. in the MLS, uh, so that there's flexibility. You know, we're, we're very conscious that people have very busy lives, and uh, uh, we're trying to build in as much flexibility as we can. What do you see as a, a successful um, group of students moving through the program? What would you say that number to be? Uh, ideally, I think in terms of, of classroom participation and interaction, you know, 13 to 15 students would would be what we're, yes, what we're aiming for because that gives uh, you know, enough voices around the table with enough uh, diversity of experience that, that there's a, a yeah. wealth in, that can develop. How affordable is the program? I mean, that's always a question that comes up with private schools, and, and we are a private school, Catholic, mm -hmm. Norbertine Liberal Arts College, but we're private. And um, 
tuition is an issue. You know, so. Yeah, I've gotten that question several times already because people say, well, I know St. Norbert College is expensive mm. uh, compared to public institutions. That's the undergrad uh, tuition. Mm. The, the uh, tuition for the graduate program is very different and extremely uh, um, competitive with other institutions. Mm -hmm. It's $350 per credit. So um, an average course would be? A yeah, three credit course would be 10, just over, 50? yeah, right over a thousand dollars. Correct. Yeah. And so it is a f conceivably affordable. Mm -hmm. And um, and are you, who are you really targeting? Uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but who mm -hmm. is the real target? Is it the young professional? Is it the retiree? Is it's, it a mixture of both? It, well, it's a mixture of both, though, though if we use other programs as a guide, mm -hmm. uh, more and more young professionals uh, who may be out of school for a few years and either found that, boy, would they miss the mm -hmm. academic setting and the give and take. Uh, we had a young woman at our open house a few weeks ago who said, yes. you know, she, she's very successful in her Remember job. Remember that, yeah. Yeah, uh, and she, she said, but she misses the kind of intellectual exchange, the discussion of ideas. Uh, and a lot of times um, alums uh, from the institution, uh, also those who look back and, you know, maybe got into a major real quickly in their undergrad mm -hmm. and didn't have the kind of breadth of, of education that they now see as so important. Uh, as one deals with you know, family issues or politics or e economics or whatever. Now, you were not always um, um, necessarily an advocate of this program, but what, what turned you into an advocate for it? Uh, several, several reasons. I th one is, and by the way, I, I think, you know, the, my reluctance initially was, well, you know, is this going to take away from our undergrad education? And, and we will been, diminish that in some way. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I looked at programs, Across the country, and saw what, in fact, how how well they were put together, the enthusiasm mm. that marks the programs, and and talking to other directors, their enthusiasm for us wanting that they wanted us to do this because they said there's a real need to do it, and I think it builds on the strengths of St. Norbert College. Um, well, I think it, I think yeah, one of the arguments that you made earlier, it's it's the core business, mm -hmm. and so you know we we talk about it a lot. I think it's interesting, you know, for the audience to. to just reflect on the fact that we have three traditions. Mm -hmm. The Catholic, mm -hmm. 2,000 years. Yes. We have the Norbertine, mm -hmm. maybe we could call it 900 years. Yep. But we've got the liberal arts tradition, which is, I wouldn't say ageless, but it's thousands it's and thousands, thousands of years. years. Correct. So those three traditions come together here. And do you see the program supporting all three of those traditions? Yes, to the extent that each tradition tries to address the big questions, the big issues of the time, and the whole person and trying to break out of what has become commonplace so often is fragmentation of knowledge or very narrow specialization. I think those three traditions at their best moments have always tried to, may not be the word that they had used, but interdisciplinary, holistic, yes. and recognize that you have to look at the whole person. Uh, you can analyze, dissect, but at the end of the day, you've got to put them back together again. They're living, breathing human beings who need to be understood. Yes, I think that's very well put. Um, if w someone wanted to find out more about the program, how would they do it? Uh, they can go to our website. Okay. Um, I think it'll be up on the screen. It's uh, www.snc.edu backslash MLS okay. uh, or contact me uh, directly by email or phone. My okay. email address is howard.ebert at snc.edu okay. or my phone number, 920 Four zero three three nine five six, and then you'll respond to their questions. Yes, and, yes. And respond accordingly. Um, are you planning any other open houses? Yes, yes. Um, depending on enrollment for the fall course, we well, no matter what the enrollment is for the fall course, we'll have another open house uh, in the fall sometime. And um, just one other date to keep in mind that registration for the fall course would be due by um, the deadline is August twentieth. Is there any flexibility in that? <laughs> uh, well, I just talked about flexibility, yeah, right, so right, you better right. say yes. Yes, better there is. Yes. Good, okay. So they could contact you about all those issues. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just go backwards a bit to the beginning of our conversation where we talked about the relationship between undergraduate and graduate. I just want to plumb that a bit. How do you see the undergraduate program being enriched by the graduate program? Well, enriched in one very significant way that I think sometimes we, we, we don't always... Um, recognize is for our undergrads to see students here on campus uh, at night or on the weekend mm -hmm. uh, studying in the library uh, on campus and so that's 
a sign, a symbol of sorts that it represents that my that gosh, adults people are, are really interested in the same right. things that we are interested in. Yes, right? yeah. And um, I know personally because you know I've taught in the MTS class. I go back to my undergrad class. Uh, I think inspired by the conversations I've had and enriched by people's experiences that I can draw upon to use in, in class with my undergrad students. Um, and I, I think just the added motivation to see other people who are interested in the same issues. So often, late at night, you think, well, why should I read one more article? Why should I watch it? What? Right. And I think when you're, when you're surrounded by people who are really interested and, and alive intellectually, uh, that gives you the added push to stay alive. So if I was interested in the program, what kinds of courses could I expect to see in the catalog you know, for this program? Um, one of the things, and I, it's a word that's been used often, I've used it often today, is flexibility. Right. Uh, we do have an introduction to the liberal arts. As that's a, the opening a, seminar. That's the opening seminar. And then we have core areas, uh, intellectual history, and then natural science, um, social science, and humanities fine arts. But underneath each one will be a particular themed class. Such as? Uh, for instance, creation and evolution, uh, gendered uh, institutions, uh, race and identity. Uh, so those classes fit under those areas. And then we have thematic areas okay. where uh, courses can again range in terms of, of economics, uh, sports and economics, mm -hmm. um, and uh, classical, those thematic areas. There's five, the student has to uh, select four, four of the five. five yeah. uh, they range from classical studies to ethics, uh, to diversity and so forth. Interesting. Do you expect um, Do you expect that there will be uh, any controversy connected to the program at all? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think when people care deeply and passionately, there's going to be some controversy. Some out there. And yeah. I think uh, one of the things that the tradition is ongoing conversation and debate discussion. Uh, you know, we're, we're asking the big questions, and good people of equal intelligence disagree, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes vehemently. For instance, you know, what is justice, and how, how can one be just in the world? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I expect some controversy, and uh, I think uh, one of the things that marks our world is that we recognize people think quite differently from yes. one another, and we need to find ways to find common ground and also to respect, but also to continue the conversation and discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think this program gives people those kind of skills. Yeah, I would think this would be a natural extension of all the principles of Excordia Ecclesia, the mm -hmm. papal encyclical on, on Catholic universities and colleges, where this is where the church should be doing its thinking, you know, exactly. and working through issues. And I think the program seems to be a nice complement to the Masters of Theological Studies mm -hmm. in the sense that it's not focused on theological studies, right. but it would be open to any of the questions that that one could ask. You know, exactly. We should be the freest. In fact, the program should be probably the freest of all programs to ask the questions, the big questions, as yes. you said earlier, yes. and, and not be hemmed in and not be controlled in some mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. so, um, but it's a place uh, to think out loud. And you know, when you think out loud, not every idea is of equal weight, but you think out loud and it can be, it can be weighted, it can be uh, argued, debated, challenged, and challenged. Yeah, and maybe pushed. Mm -hmm. See, what I like about the concept is the fact that what will come out of the program our ideas and concepts that will go beyond what anybody brought into the program. Exactly. And that would include the readings as well as the discussion. Yes. So I want to thank you for being oh. with us this evening. Okay. Um, our thanks to our special guest, Dr. Howard Eber, for sharing his expertise with us. Please join us for future programs as we continue our exploration of the world of ideas. Until then, I'm Michael Marsden for Conversations from St. Norbert College.